Okay. Test, sound test. Okay, we are ready for the last lightning talk. I'm sorry we are a bit already over time. I know some of you want to go get your coffee. I promise you I'll try to be quick. I hope everyone is still awake and energized. I see some people in the back who look like they are sleeping. <laughs> no, some people are do doing a thumbs up. So, okay, either way, let's start this thing, shall we? I want to ask three questions before I start. The first one is who here has heard about SolidJS? Okay, so the people who, raised, who didn't raise their hands were not here yesterday for Attila's talk. Got you. Uh, so the second question here is, who here has used SolidJS? Okay, there's some hands raised up. And the third question here is, who here has heard, read, or watched Dune? Okay, I see the confusion in your face. You see, six years ago, uh, SolidJS showed everyone the path. And there's a reason why we say we showed everyone the path. It was all about reactivity. This is where we were, well, six years ago. And it was the difference between having fine-grained reactive systems, where basically the framework doesn't need to run any code to identify that there were updates, versus having coarse-grained uh, coarse reactive systems, where the framework actually needs to run code to identify that there's updates that need to happen on the DOM. And this is how we started. This is how we are right now. You see, almost everyone saw the value of fine-grained reactivity. And, well, it was not just our users that benefited. The developers, as we got a better developer experience out of it, I would say even a clear mental model. But around a couple of years ago, one discussion started showing up. We started talking about the server. Some of us started discussing, OK, what if we could go back to doing server-side rendering? Our apps would probably benefit out of it. We could afford some of the responsibilities from the client, yada, 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 yada. And well, what was the easiest way for us to do that? It was definitely not doing a Webpack config. One of the easiest ones was going in a meta framework way, the sandworm in a sense. So here we have Nuxt, which is one of Vue's um, meta framework, Analog, which is from Angular, and obviously from React we have Next.js. And meta frameworks, for those of you who are not familiar, are basically frameworks built on top of frameworks. And I know we had this discussion earlier on today, so I'm just going catching up here a bit. And they are not just about better developer experience. They allow you to have these things like multiple rendering modes, and SSR was one of them. Now, the question that everyone started having when everyone was starting to do SSR again was, what about Solid? Where does Solid sit in this discussion? What is Solid Sandworm? Well, in 2021, Vite 2.0 came out, and that week, Ryan Carniado, the creator of Solid, started working on Solid Start. And that's a bit where we'll be discussing in this talk. Just a very quick introduction. My name is Daniel Alphonse. I'm a developer advocate at OLX. I'm an Agadio instructor. And as you might have noticed, because I'm kind of biased now, I'm uh, part of the SolidJS DX team, like my friend Attila there. Some also, also cool, some interesting stuff that you might want to check up. I wrote a book last year about state management with React Query. I really, really love React Query. I also released a, a testing course on Agath, and I've been maintaining a monthly newsletter uh, about Solid, where I catch up what's happening every month in SolidJS. So if you have heard on This Week in React, I do a This Month in Solid, basically the very <laughs> similar. And this pre uh, past month, we talked about something which is Solid Hack. Attila briefly meant, mentioned it yesterday, but in October 1st, we are starting Solid Hack. We have $15,000 to give away in awards for the participants. The winners, not the participants, not that. That would be interesting. Um, no. So if you want to check it out starting October 1st, you all can participate. Now, what brought us here? Um, the question everyone's thinking, why do we need a meta framework? Well, meta frameworks are not just about multiple rendering modes. They are not just about proper guidelines, deployment adapters, and improved developer experience because you have opi opinions. It's about having a faster time to production. It's about us getting our hands dirty and shipping to our users as fast as possible. That's why we are paid, to get stuff out there faster and faster so there's the, there can be money made. Now, there is one keyword here that usually scares some JavaScript developers that is opinionated. There is this assumption that when you are opinionated, you don't have freedom. We like to be surfing on the edge of what's showing up every new week. We like to try out new libraries. And having opinions, it's being locked in. This is like, a like being afraid of relationships. We are so scared of 
like committing that we like to try out stuff that's showing up new. That's kind of the vibe that we usually get sometimes in the JavaScript ecosystem. And when we're talking about meta frameworks, the, opi the opinions start from the top to the bottom. The router usually is the most opinionated piece there. Then we go into the framework, the bundler, and the server runtime. Now, going back real quick, what about Solid? Where's Solid Meta Framework? Well, like I said, in 2021, Solid Start uh, was starting to get worked on. This year, in May, we released the first version of Solid Start. And now you might be thinking, OK, why are you telling me this? This is a React conference. Why are we talking about Solid Start? And why is this called the shape of frameworks to come? Because Solid Start shares a philosophy that I really relate to it. It's about choosing your own path. And this is not an inspirational talk at all. This is not, even though it might seem, but Solid Start is meant to be a starter. It's meant to be a way for you to start your projects. It's an opi unopinionated starter for building your applications. For instances, I showed you that the most opinionated stuff we had in a meta framework is the router. With Solid Start, if you don't want to add the solid router, which is the, by, the, by facts, the de facto way of doing routing in Solid, you don't need to. Solid Start is a way for you to start building your applications, and then you can add whatever you want. And this is kind of why we talk about being the shape of frameworks to come. Frameworks, meta frameworks should give you a way to start building your applications, but not walk you in into its decisions. And, and Solid Start, this is just a very, very um, high overview of how it's built. So the router is there. Like I told you, you can take it out. You can bring your own router. 10-stack router, for instance, has been discussed for to being support to Solid in the future. We have Serval, which is our serializer. Uh, that's very interesting discussion. We can talk about it later because we have five minutes, and I still have a very live code to show. Um, we have a fr our framework, which is Solid. And then we have Vinci, which is basically a layer built on top of Vite and Nitro. Um, and we'll talk about this outside if you're interested in knowing more about how this works. Because now let's talk about the features and what are some of the cool things you can have with Solid Start, for instance. There are all of these ones, and now in three minutes, I'll try to show half of them. Let's see how I can do this. So let's get this Visual Studio code showing up here. OK, we should let me get this full screen. Let me zoom this up. So here we have an app that allows you to see a list of Pokemons. And the way this works is basically we are using create a sync, which is basically a primitive that turns promises into signals to call or get Pokemon's function. What this is going to do while this is being fetched, suspense is going to suspend. So we're going to render our fallback. And then when we have our data, we're going to show our Pokemon list, which is basically going to be what we see here. Now, there's some interesting stuff here. We are using Solid Router. Um, and and when, and this is the thing, you're free to choose your own path, but obviously when you opt into the defaults, there can be some improved developer experience, like we mentioned, that you can get from other frameworks. But if you opt in into using some, like, something like Solid Router, you can do this thing called a preload. And what preload does, it's basically telling the framework, it's telling Solid Start that, hey, look, whenever you're coming into this route, this route is going to need the data that comes from this function. That's called get Pokemon. And what does this, what does, what's the benefit of this? Instead of basically coming into the route and then the route fetching the data here, now the, the, route, the data will be fetched in parallel or even before you get into the route. Uh, if, like for instance, there's an over over a link and there's like the preload intent, it can figure out to fetch this earlier. Now, these are still functions that are being called. So now you might be thinking, OK, but if you call the function here and you call the function here, it's still two function calls. Aren't you basically going to end up uh, fetching the data twice? No, because of the next thing that we have here, and I should be able to step in, which is called cache. So if you, for, for the people who are familiar, for instance, so stuff like 10 stack query, it's not quite like it, but it's similar. So basically what we're telling here is to this function that it should fetch the data and then cache it under this cache key. We're also telling this function, A, hey, we have this thing called use server that Solid came up with a couple, three years ago, um, and turns this function into an, an RPC call. If, for instance, if you're doing client-side rendering, and that's a completely other discussion. But the gist is, this data is cached under this thing. And what this means is whenever we get here, the data is there. 
Then we have our form. Forms are the ways of doing mutations, and this form has an action. And what this action is doing is basically a, a, server, a server action that's going to get the form data and basically catch a Pokemon, and then going to tell the router, hey, send me back to the index. Now, you might be thinking, why are you telling me all of this thing? Well, because I want to lead you into one of the things that I really, really, really love about Solid Start, which is one of my favorite features, that it's called single fight mutations. Because what happens tradi traditionally is, let's imagine that we are doing a mutation. OK, we do our post. So the form triggers a post request. The, the, then the post request, OK, goes to the server. The server goes the change, adds data into their database. Then what do we do traditionally? OK, we say, let's redirect ourselves now to the index page so we can view the data that we had. OK, so post, redirect. But then we get to the, to the index page, and then usually we say, OK, the index page needs this data, doesn't it? So then we fetch the data. And as you might be seeing, we're going into something that it's called a waterfall. We're going to have waterfalls on our network. So now I want to show you something really interesting, having this in mind. So I'm going to catch a Pokemon. Uh, I'm going to go with Wukario, for instance, which is my favorite Pokemon. And I hope I get the number right. I think it's 448. If it isn't, I'm going to be embarrassed. I throw a Master Ball, and he, ca he caught it. But now there's also something interesting here. There is only one request. What happened here? What is this thing? Well, this is what you have when you can have a meta framework and a router communicate, and you have a router that is smart enough to figure out the data dependencies of your application. What happens here is because Solve Start knows that the index route needs this data, and that the mutation, the server action, knows that it needs to redirect. When we do a post, because the router has knowledge of this, what the router will do is send back the index page, at the same time trigger a data fetching, and, s and stream it back in, all in a single flight. And this is why it's called single flight mutations. I really, really love this thing. I uh, just wanted to show it to you. So to finish this up, and if I can get my slides to work. Uh, OK, let's slide. And yeah, this is just some of the cool things you can do with Solid Start. Solid Start ended up basically giving us a way to ship full stack production, uh, full stack solid production ready quality applications. It is really exciting. And it does this thing that it's why we say it's a shape of frameworks to come. It gives you an indication on how you could start an application without being opinionated, without getting locked in into its defaults. I mean, you could do it, but no one makes it, makes it so. So with that said, React Alicante, it is a real pleasure to be here. I'll be around.